All right, welcome back to the final episode of the cash game between Mochi and Abe the Snake. Uh, in episode three, Abe had the audacity to beaver the best player in the world and then proceeded to win the game. If you missed that episode, it is on my channel. The link will be in the description. Uh, you need to check that one out. And here we go with episode four. The rules of this cash game. We have a clock initiated in this cash game. And for every second they go over their 12 second delay time, they will be charged one and a half percent of a point. So you will be seeing these two players moving quite quickly. Uh, if the dice are on the checkers, that is a legal roll. The delay time can be reset if the dice are rolled off of the playing surface. Gentleman rules there. We have the Jacoby rule in effect, meaning that you cannot win a gammon unless you have turned the cube. And like we saw in last session, beavers definitely exist here. So why wait any longer? Let's get this show on the road. And we shall begin. All right. Who? I'm excited. Six two opening roll for Mochi, followed by three two. Six two again, repeating dice. 5-1. I guess we just slot the five point. Six one makes the five. Five five. Okay, that can't be bad. Just come all the way around. No shots. Looks like you're up in the race now, but you've got one guy back. Double three should just make the bar. We don't want to give them the jokers that like six five to run. You'd rather be hit with the ace because the ace is duplicated to cover anyway, right? And now he's in this spot where he has to. No, he doesn't have to hit, does he? He could just make the point and go to the two point, right? Just strengthen your board some. Yeah, good play. Good play. Being able to stop yourself from a hit in this time control is pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. 2-1, okay, stepping up. Looking for a way out. He's thinking about it, not quite good enough. Instantly makes the outside point. Oh, and he can't get away now. You see, if he made the four there, 6-3 would have escaped. Mochi knows to make the nine, good double. I'd pass. I don't like my prospects here. And it is a very small pass. I would have thought it was a little bigger than that, but I guess anything can happen. I bet you if Abe knew it was that close, he would have taken. We found out that Abe is quite a bit of a taker. Double fives. No problem. Five three. Hits. 2-6, hits back. 4-6, okay. Enters and plays down, just one blot. 3-3, wow. Can't believe that just made the four point. It's pretty disgusting. 1-6, double. Insta takes, okay. Was that even a, yeah, that was a really small cube. Mochi knows. Four, and you gotta play the five down, right? A little more, or the... Hmm, okay. And he gets hit. Don't leave the blot out there. Four, three fans. Double ones makes the five, okay. One, six. Three, four. Should just run. Maybe running down? Hmm. Another man in the zone can't complain. 4-3. Okay, I'd run now. 3-4. 1-6. Yeah, I would just go to the 9, but 
I don't think there's a big deal here. The guy has no board. And of course, he rolls the two now. Five, four. Just run. One, five. This is a, a common thing. I can't believe that Mochi's only up two points. It feels like he's been gammoning Abe every single game. I swear, some of these gambler moves he's been uh, using against Mochi. Uh, oh, six, five. Okay. Every game. Abe's won some uh, decisive games where his aggressiveness has worked out in his favor. And that's a, a double-edged sword at times. You know, when it works, it works. And that's great. But when it doesn't work, you find yourself buried. So in this session, so far it's been working for him to keep him close. Because as far as I can see, it feels like he's been getting gammoned almost every game. And that's just uh, a dice thing, you know? It's not like he did anything crazy to get himself into these spots. It's just sometimes it works that way. 4-2. Two, double twos. And... Another Gammon. For the PR, he stays there until he can lose a BG. That's one of the, that's one of the tricks <laughs> if, you're, if you're playing for PR. Wow, okay. So Mochi's playing a 3.48 so far over the entire session, and Abe is playing a 4.26, which is much better than I was expecting. Respect to him. I mean, he even beavered the guy, and he's still playing a 4.26, which there's something to be said for that. If he didn't beaver him, he might be playing sub-4 right now, or somewhere close. Six and make the nine. Even though it's somewhat safer to just turn the corner, that structure is forever. And will pay dividends into the future. Okay, and then down and down, apparently. Seems to be... Okay, he doesn't leave the shots. I probably would have just to make the bar, but it looked like it was a small mistake. 5-2, and now he's coming up. Abe wants a 4. Double 6s, not what he was looking for, but he'll take it because he has no choice. Oh, double 2s fan, give him the thing. Nah, too early. Sometimes he likes to, uh... Okay, okay, okay. Come out? I would just come out, yeah. Try to fade the 3 and the 4. Okay, there's the three, and the five hops out. One, five, two, five, three, five. Not four, five, though. That's a fan, and that's why he didn't cube. The turnaround was too quick. Whew. Six, five's a double hit. He chooses not to. He just said, I'm not gonna. I don't know if you heard it in the background. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it, he says. I'm not going to do it, and you can't make me. That's uh, an old school positional idea where you just refuse to put a checker on the ace. But that's the style he's always played, so he knows how to play it well. Three hits, and the two just goes to the eight, I guess. Don't think I'd leave all the extra shots with 13-11. The 5-1 would have been hit. Seems a bit big to make this play with all the checkers ready to unload on you. 
He knows Abe will take worse, so he doesn't give him the thing. The double hit, though. Ooh, the five. Okay, that's a cube saver. One and make the two. If he fans, you can think about it. Nothing to think about. Two, and your ace just scoots up. Right. Okay. They wanted him to slot the bar as well. That's interesting. What are you roll? Double fives? Pretty good shake. Ooh, double one. Start to even some things out here. Five one. Just run. Four four. It's too expensive to count the race. Let's just make the board. Okay, and he can't safety the guy. Yeah, make him give up something. This is generally... Oi! And just come down to the eight. Yeah, generally, you know, you just lay yourself in front of the anchor there. So if he hits you, he has to give up something uh, in order to do it, you know? And if he didn't roll something as perfect as double sixes... It would have been more difficult. All right, well, that's a way to fight back. 4-3, two down. Technically correct by the smallest margins in a cash game. <laughs> Sneezing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I apologize for the sneeze. Even though it's involuntary. 3-1 <laughs> uh, makes the bar. Wow. Whose sixes were those? No? Nobody's? 6-2 makes the four. 6-3 hits. <sighs> ah. Seems reasonable. 5-5. Five, five. Here comes the blitz. And does he enter? No, he fans, but he can't give him anything yet. He's got too many men back. Maybe if he gets to make the five before he enters, he could consider it then. Double threes. Oh, something in the air. <laughs> it must be a gammon I smell. Oh, the strong arm of the law. And now, I guess the game is over, but from the other side... Not enough flexibility. Seems too hard to win. Not enough wins. 5-5 five, five is the best number you could roll in that spot. What happened? They're switching directions? But the 4 3 stays. 6 5 runs. All right. Let's see some action. Double fours. Ooh, he left all the blots after making the advanced anchor, but the 3 5 is blocked. No punishment. 6-2 should make the 7. Oh, he misses. Okay. Just 13-8. Can't do anything too fancy. One man back versus two man back. You're just trying to get the back guy out. Okay. The cube looks a little too early to me. Um, even if it technically is a cube against the Abe Snake, who is a, a bit of a deep taker. You know he's going to take this position, which is, you know, so why double the other one? That makes the five, okay. Maybe he passes this one, but he would have taken the roll before. One, four slots, six, three, just makes the three point. 
I'd give him the six out just for the structure. If he doesn't pop the six this roll, the punishment will ensue. Six and six to five. Want to make it. Ace five, okay. This looks like, uh, I was going to say easy win, but he doesn't get to cover with the three or a four. So he has to do this and try to, to hit loose next time if he doesn't pop the six, which he doesn't. There's the four, and the two should just go six to four. Bit too much to hop out. You'll do so once you cover, if you cover. Five, four, hits again. Two, three. Three something. Nope, six, four, just come around. Two, six. There's the cover. Ugh. I just don't know how it happens. It's just every game this way. Imagine you're just playing, right, against the best player in the world. You know you're a dog anyway. And uh, the dice plus his skill have you closed out almost every game. What's the roll? Okay. Five, five, illegal. He has to roll again, landed on the wrong side of the board. Six, five, much better. This might be a gammon saver. Double ones. Ooh, I would come down with both, I think. So your sixes play a little better, but that's probably okay too. Just know that that other play, even though it looks like it was likely right, is more efficient for your double sixes, which, you know, you might need. But I guess less efficient for your fives. One, two, three, and three, two, gammon save. Oi. So Mochi is now leading by seven points. Three, two, splits. One, three makes the five. Even I know that. Six, four. Ooh, it, this is an interesting one. Does it make the seven or does it come all the way around? I kind of like getting the guy out. That one's definitely worth looking at again. 4-3, okay. The double hit. He's trying to hit the clock, but it's like a capacitive touch button. You can't hit it with plastic. It won't know it's being hit. 5-1 makes the 18. That's a good shot. 4-1. So why not just split? Yeah, there you go. Definitely makes uh, the 20 point more often this way. Yeah, six to three is safer. Two, two. Hits, he makes the four and hits loose on the five. Two, one. And give him the thing. You know, you've got four guys back. What? Might be a five prime, and it is, and the three just comes down. Six three has to hop the prime. The market loser there was the ace for sure, but it was still a pretty easy take because there was no guarantee he was going to roll it. Yeah. 
talking about the beaver. You can hear it in the background. Another 6-3, okay. He got those checkers out pretty easy. Three, two. Four, four enters off the anchor and then to the four. Seems pretty clear. Yikes. No, you just make the seven, yeah. I know he's looking for a way to hit, but it seems too big and the structure might pay, yep. Yeah. In the future, if he doesn't roll it, but he does roll it, he's out. Four, three. Five four, not the best roll. Bot says he should go to the one. The A six is too big. Two three makes it. Double ones. There's the six one. No. 4 1. I miss saw that. 6 4. Okay. He has to break it out of order. Oh, but he brings it in no problem. 6 2. Has to run. And 2 1. He's looking for a way to hit, but I would just play 6 to 4 and take a guy off because it's more flexible that way. And it takes a man off, right? And that can't be bad. And you would have been able to point on him this go around. Now you have to do this pick and pass thing with the gap still there. Two five, he should just come out. You're not really winning any games. Nothing's going to leave you a shot. So maybe you get lucky and roll double sixes a couple times. Five, four. I'd go to the one point. Now you have to fill in the four again. Double threes, and then I'd go to the two. Don't see the point of that. I think going to the two just gives you more numbers to take checkers off. You can fill in the gap later if you roll a three. Three, one. Six, one. Five to four. Fours are a bit too costly but they're almost worth exactly the same and his winning chances are so low, it doesn't really matter anyway. And that is the end of that one. And the snake is on the comeback trail. So watch where you're stepping. <laughs> There's a snake on the trail. Watch where you place your feet. Ooh, hold up. Tell him to bring me my money. Ah. Yeah. Uh, six, one. This isn't fair. Can I reroll? Oi, this is tough. I mean, you don't really want to come to the 18. You just get double hit too much. But doesn't this double hit you a lot too? I mean, but there's no other options. But he found the best one. And the five point gets made on his head. Can't pass that up. Four, six fans. I've seen this story before. Hit, slot the seven, and come down maybe? With two guys up, you know? Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> a lot of fanning has been called, yeah? He needs an ace from outer space. <laughs> Nothing. Okay, one more chance. Four in, five there. Yes, of course. Ace. No, no ace. Four two hits, of course. You gotta go for the closeout. There's the ace. Okay, fighting back. Mochi really needs to hit him back. Nothing. Two six here. More men in the zone. No ace. Switch. And all the way out. It's getting old, I'm sure he's thinking. It's getting old. <laughs> How many times can I be in a game where I'm getting closed out with two, three on the roof? Double six. No, 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 no. I thought I saw it. Four, one points. I mean, that's just rude. So here you're just going to play safe as you're taking checkers off. Every time you're not hit, you win a gammon. It's guaranteed. Like here, I would just clear the five point. Yeah, right? Just even, even on the outside. No need to be aggressive. You might leave awkward structure and then leave a shot and give the guy a chance. Here, there's no chance. And a gammon. Abe's trying to find the nearest window to jump out of. But don't worry, the windows don't open up very wide in New York City because City planners have thought of that. They were also backgammon players, apparently. <laughs> Three, four splits. Five, two. I think you need to hit, even though you've only got one guy back. It's generally the right idea to fight for a good point. Six, one hits. I'd make the 21 stay back. Yeah. Because you don't want to get the guy off of the, um, what is now the defensive 24, right? The dragon with the tail, I think, as Michi likes to call it. I call him the goalie back there, making sure his bad numbers can't really hide anywhere. Could also be the catcher if you like baseball. Six six fan, okay. Little momentum switch. Three and then. Oh, the split. Great play getting off of that. Double threes. Just make the three point. I think right. Oh no, he could hit loose. Of course, I didn't see it. A six. Boxes. Guess you have to point on the guy just to stop him from uh, from rolling something to make the five. Three, three. What do you do with the other one? There's one extra one. I guess you just go to the seven. But you don't like it. Five, five. Yeah. And then, do you hit on the five or do you make the ace? Tough. Five, three, yeah. <sighs> Hits and enters with both, which is pretty strong. Two, six, what a flunk of a roll. I think blue should double now, yeah. Anytime you make that five, he's dead. Your position stinks. Got holes in it. No outfield control. He just snap takes. It's a pass. And just make the five and slot. Got to make the five, and then that's your only other three, so you can't be too upset. Three, three. Okay, you can start getting upset now. And I guess you hit on the two as well. 
I don't want to get rid of the five. I have too many men to go around, but the double tiger hit. Whoo, that was a play. Oh, the fan. Oh, the one, two. Just the ace. Now he's dead. Does he want to take the four cube? The bot says it's like a two percenter for the take. And he does take it. Wow. Oh, the two, three. Hit on the ace. 5-4. Okay, you still got to fight for those points. Try to hit outside. Try to cover inside. The 6 hits. There's no good 3. But you got to put the other guy up. And now just come down so you can aim at making the, uh, the 5 as well. That would be my play. 2-6 fans. 4-1 hits and covers the ace. Six, 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 and into the four. I said six so many times, people might think I worship somebody. <laughs> six, five. Oh, no. Abe must be the worshiper after a roll like that. Two, one, bringing both in. Okay. This does leave a shot with double sixes. Okay, he doesn't roll it. Three first, then the six. 3-4 gets missed. Yesterday's roll. 4-4. Four, four. Looks like a, a gammon for Abe coming up if he doesn't get hit. 6-4. Okay. First trouble point cleared. Now he needs to work on getting the 4 clear. He'd like to do it with doubles. He does roll doubles. Now Mochi's getting off the BG. <laughs> oh, a double there would have been funny for the fans, you know? So there's no BG, but the Gammon is locked up. And Abe is fighting back. Fighting back. Whew. He is on the comeback trail. 6-4. Wow, 4-1. And you should split. There's a guy on the 9 point. You should split. Anytime the play is like generally different uh, than your normal opening play, it's because there's a guy on the 9. Always ends up being something a little different there. Just make the... Well, yeah, of course you can hit and then come down. Been missing these hits today. I'm like, ah, make the point. <laughs> I'm like, no, the hit is obvious. Double six points. Okay. Looks like this game is over. He was he was passing before he before he touched the cube. He was gonna draw it out some. Is it is it tied again already? Ah, okay. So the guy keeping track of the games, who shall remain unnamed, said it's game 46. And we can see from the transcription here that it is game 39. So he dropped five games somehow in the, um, the keeping of the score and track of the games. Uh, we know the score is correct because we've been keeping track of it game by game on my scoreboard here. Made by Backgammon Galaxy. I don't. I don't think they still have these in stock anymore. But it is my my favorite scoreboard, just for how robust it is. Shows up really well on screen. This four two needs to just. Oh, he could hit again. Anytime it looks like you can just make a point, there's always been a hit out there, and the hit's always been correct today. But I will say it is difficult for me as well to pass up making the 
a defensive 20 point. 3-4. All right. Let's hope this turns into a complicated game. Double fives. Okay. Maybe not so complicated. Maybe a quick one. <laughs> oh, he enters with 5-2. I still give him the cube. And he should obviously pass. He has nothing. But Abe loves these games for some reason. I don't know why. There goes the coffee maker again. I don't know if I would go after him. I think I would just go to seven and six to four, but everything's been going right today, so you might as well. And he lifts the blot. No two, but there's your six, five and six. Five and six again. Okay, just makes the eight, leaving the ace shot right now. Five three's a hitter, though. So this could either win or get you gammoned. It looks like it's going to get him gammoned. One four. Wow, you just come up to the 20 here. You can't hide the blot because he's going to attack you on the ace point anyway. Six five should just run around. Nah. That's how you get counter primed, you know, doing stuff like that. So, I mean, you don't want to get gammon, but you. But this just kind of concedes. He's hoping somehow he gets to make a better board in the future. He would have been missed, though. 4-4. Four, four. Just slot the 4. No? 13-9. Yeah, yeah, of course. You don't want two blots in your board in case you get to hit the guy. 2-5, so you don't get to hit him now. Maybe. Just make the 5. 5-5. Five, five. Easy peasy. Looks like he's uh, <laughs> trying to get a running gammon here as well. Five here, two off. Okay, he just needs to clear the six. Just making his board. No. There he goes again. Ah, double fours. That should help with the gammon save. Four, three. Two, 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 two. Six, five. Double fours again. You can't gammon me, he says. Three, one. Six, one, okay. Six, five. Mochi's rolling big numbers, but he doesn't need them. Two crossovers. Oh, hasn't saved the gammon yet. Oh, 5-4. Five, I thought that was 5-5. Five, five. <laughs> I'm saying I almost marked the score. Abe marks the score before the end of the game all the time in our shoeette. Nice save. Nice save. Mochi's plus two. So against two down opening rolls... With your aces that don't just make the five naturally, you're supposed to slot. Uh, with the idea being that if he hits you with the four, what he's not doing is making those points, which is what he was trying to do by playing two down to begin with. And so you're you're making some sort of distraction play, you know, and then it increases the volatility of the game. You could enter and hit outside. You could enter and hit on the inside. But what you've stopped him from doing is making a permanent asset. And then... If he doesn't roll a four, maybe you just make the five and balance the game that way. Double ones. Clean it up, and I guess we just... Yeah, nice find. Is this five, five? Okay, so he makes the point. No, it's not five, five. What is this? Five, one. Six, six. He slaps it down, letting him know. <laughs> but you can't outroll me. I won the world championship twice. 
Oh, she knows he's down in the race, so he shouldn't be running or leaving anytime soon. Just bringing more builders in the zone like this. He makes the three. Five, six is not a friendly roll. Guess you just play two down. Anything else is just a bit too big. Here, you know, the three is duplicated to hit you outside and hit you inside. So that's a good feature of the position for him. This gets hit with way too many numbers. Sixes, ones, eights. It says take, but I would pass. Yeah, I don't like it, but... That's because I can see the uh, the XG feed, but over the board I would pass after that play, but take after the other one, so that's why I would have made the other one. But if you think it's a pass after either play, then it doesn't matter, right? So it's all about what you think your equity is after a play A versus play B and just trying to give yourself uh, the best chance in that game. And, And what play can you make that will allow you to take? The problem arises, like I said, when you think after every play it's a pass. But not all of those threes are necessarily market losers, right? Because he could get hit back. Double threes. Yeah, no, this is very common theme. You just make the bar in these spots. 6-4 hits, though. Wow, what a shot. Is that another 5-5? Five, five? Unbelievable, we're seeing! What just happened? 5-5 five, five again, my goodness. I think Mochi should buy some stock in double fives. <laughs> it's been frequently occurring. It'd be a good return on his investment. Another 6-2 split. 5-3 makes the point. 6-3. I, I would make the anchor since he has you outboarded at the moment. The three should down just solidify the game make sure your score can't swing too much so you go home with some money six four makes the seven four six hits back okay three six fans double twos four point and make the 11 more men in the zone more points ace ace another holy grail these doubles from the roof should be limited to just uh, two every 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 game. Mochi's already reached his limit. Anytime he rolls another one, he has to re-roll. No, he doesn't. I'm just making it up. That's crazy. But five three. So he's just starting the uh, the board building expedition. Yeah, I'd go to the ace, save yourself a funny six. He just puts all of his ducks in a row, builds a board, waiting for the time the shot might occur. And of course, Abe is hoping that it never does. So he's only up 12. Likely not enough to give a cube. 6-2. 4-3, okay. So here's a shot. Just make the two, and I would play 6-5. to five. Just because it looks prettier. And for the race, if you're missed, you know, you don't want to have a gap on the five either. He misses, but gets to cover. Double fives, okay. So Mochi doesn't have a monopoly on double fives. Abe can roll them too. 
double fours and he goes perfect just enough for a bad take but mochi can see he's down how much xyz yeah too much still a pass maybe if he gave him double fives he would take maybe he could sell him double fives allow him to re-roll Mochi's uh, was asked if he's ever had the pip count. Abe's asking if he had the pip count too at any point during this match. Abe has never had the pip count, not one time. As we know though, Mochi has been keeping a running pip count the entire time for all of the games he's been able to keep the count going for. I think I would have split with the two and played the six down 13 to seven for Abe. I don't know if coming into that contact was good for him. Just allows it him uh, an easier time to bring everybody home this way. 5-3 just makes the point, and Abe's like, give me a 6. And here again, you just split small. And now you're being attacked. And if there's no 5, and there is no 5, still... Yeah, you just make the 23 and accept the cube and your fate. What's he thinking? That it's not good enough? Nah, yeah, you got to give the guy the thing. What's the number? Five, two. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, you make the five. 3-1. 5-2, okay. Everyone's nice and safe now. He's just trying to make the 4 to fill in the gap. He cannot. Not yet, but this play can still be safe. 6-3, okay. All the ducks in a row. 5-2, two, 2 down, paying off to, what is it? 5-4 five, and 5-4 five, only. 5-2, 6-3. Six, three, yep. Yeah. There's the five, four. Two, one. Six, four. Just the four, no six can be played. You're supposed to go to the one point there, start your next one gonna be waiting here just trying to build your board you don't want everybody to come in because you don't want to be forced off your anchor too quickly five one no shots four three okay just the four sixes are still killed six six can't move three two still i'm giving nothing 3-1. He still can't move off of that. 3-2 is shot time. And he's only going to give him the 4. So both are coming forward. And does he roll the 4? He's shaking hard. No. 3-2. 4-2 two has to run. 5-5 five, five again. Now he's rushing off the gammon once again. Oh, another shot. Hit the guy. Hit the guy. Two, two, two. He's praying. He's praying. Six, one. No hit. Five, four. Okay. He's racing, racing, racing. Five, three. Okay. He's a favorite to get off. No double from Mochi. Abe brings the guy in. So threes are better. And he wins the G. I see the two in the window. No gammon. No gammon. But still, two more points for Mochi. But he's only plus five. What do you think I played at? What do you think I played at? Oh, and it's over. So, uh, that was the challenge. And those were our games. And after 45 logged games, Masayuki Mochizuki is up five points over the Abe Snake. And now we will go into our Super Grandmaster discussion about some of the positions from today's games. All right. I will uh, 
See you on the flip side. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Subscribe and like. Episodes one and episodes three, the episode where Abe Beavers Mochi and then turns the game around, is on my channel. Episodes two and four of this challenge are on Mochi's channel. This is episode four, the final episode. I also have a Chouette episode coming on my channel, so please follow me over there. Subscribe to that channel. Or Mochi, two-time world champion. Nevzet, one-time world champion. And gambling legend Abe the Snake Mosari are playing a three-man Chouette. And uh, here we go. I'll see you during the Super Grandmaster discussion time. All right, we are here with the final Super Grandmaster analysis session, starring the world's only Super Grandmaster, Masayuki Mochizuki, otherwise known as Mochi. How are you doing today, Mochi? Hello, I'm doing great. Thank you uh, for having me today. Um, yeah, I look forward to our, our final session here, going over the last, I guess, 15 games of this challenge. So the challenge is over. You won five points in total. So my question to you is going into this, did you have any, did you ever have any expectations or have any thoughts of expected value against any opponent? I don't know. Um, not really, but I expected that uh, he, uh, I spend more time than he does. So I would lose some money uh, according to the time bank. Uh, but I also uh, expected that I would win some points um, on average. But you know, back then, um, um, say you're uh, like point one average, you know, then the actual result might be like you are up like twenty five points or you're down like fifteen points. It's like <laughs> there's no uh, middle, so it can land it um, anywhere, you, you know. But uh, I think uh, there are five points after 45 games, it's like, uh, like uh, average expectation, you know, I would say. So if we look at the final results, you played a 2.78 at that speed, which is absolutely crazy. <laughs> like I've, that's really, really impressive. And Abe, I thought played also equally impressive. I didn't know his PR was going to be as low as it was. Um, after I rolled out only a single position, which we'll get to in, in this um, session here, his overall average was a 4.23, which means there was a one and a half PR difference during this during this session. That's uh, yeah. really, really good. Yeah, this is um, um, amazingly good. Uh, and I uh, also uh, impressed by uh, Ames' performance at that level. Um, this is yeah, absolutely amazing. 4.3 uh, he played. You know, uh, people told me that he played five, and you know, he played five and a five, and they are all wrong. You know, yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. Play four, yeah, if, if he could play 4.3 in this speed level, ah, I don't know, actually. Maybe he plays worse in when he's thinking, but uh, he, he, I, 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 he does. Yeah. Um, only, but only by only because he talks himself into into even more takes. You know, we've seen throughout the challenge, he's a bit of a taker, right? Um, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. against a bit. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a, a bit a of bit. a taker. And that's yeah. against you. So uh, imagine how he takes against people that aren't as good as you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, get, it yeah. gets even deeper for sure. But uh, I, go ahead. He's a big, big taker, you know. Yeah. Uh, he's, um, yeah. Do you think it's easier to play against someone who takes deep or passes quick? Uh, I, well, it's much easier to play against someone if we drop the cue mark more often, you know, then I just double Ari. <laughs> yeah. And then you could put the pressure on, then you can see how much they're willing to give you in certain spots, you know? And when somebody takes a lot, I mean, back game, it's a crazy game. You have to play every game to the end and you have to make every good checker play, you know, as well as you can along the way and anything can happen. So yeah. Yeah. It's pretty wild, but yeah, let's, um, let's get into some of these things. So I'm on game 31. Mm -hmm. Um, and breezing through the game here, I didn't really see anything that stood out. A few small technical things, but nothing overall. Let's see here. Game 32. 
I feel like he spent a lot of time on the roof trying to save gammons in a lot of these games. And I don't Mm -hmm. know how he only lost five points when it felt like every other game he was on the roof closed out with the threat of getting gammoned. Did you, did you you notice that at all when you were playing like that? He just was closed out. Like it felt like all the time. And for the score to only be five points at the end is kind of amazing. Yeah, but uh, he was also lucky to, you know, save the game on some games. Yeah. Um, uh, also, you know, he he won eight points in one game, which was um, pretty big, you know. That's true. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, not in this session. I mean, not this uh, segment, but uh, like two. Yeah, a two, few sessions ago. Two? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there were some XO. games where he chose to go into some high volatility positions, right? Where, Mm. you know, depending on where you land, if you win those or if you lose those, when you you take those passes can really set the the tone for an entire session, you know, like that's winning some of those crazy takes was how he was able to keep the score so close when it could have swung entirely the other direction and could have been a much larger score. So I'm on game 34, move number two. Yeah. Do you remember this game at all? I mean, everybody knows, or maybe not everybody, maybe people that are new to the game don't know that after like a 6X split, when you play 6-5, you're supposed to play 13-7-6 to, to 1 and hit twice. And yeah. Abe, Abe hit with the 6, and then I remember him just pausing over the board, right? Because one of the things that anyone who's played with him for any length of time knows is that he hates putting a checker on the, on, on the one point. Yeah, like almost uh, more than this anything. Game? Yeah, I, I remember this game that he plays six five two down is, instead of the double hit, and I was like, "Wow!" <laughs> so, yeah, because... what was the last time I played a guy like this? You know, I I don't even remember. Maybe you know, I have to go back uh, all the way back to the play sixty five time. You know, play sixty five. <laughs> I used to play on play six five. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I mean. Uh, of course, I play uh, much weaker opponents in many, many occasions, you know, much weaker than A, but uh, everybody plays 6-5, you know, double hit because this computer just says so, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it's so funny it's pretty impressive. Yeah. because it's not like he doesn't know that hitting on the one is the correct play. He knows it's correct to do the other play, but still doesn't want to do it. Mm-hmm. And that's a personal choice. And, you know, I feel like he... He feels like he understands game plans better that don't involve having the ace point. And I think that's that's interesting. I know that there's a player who I think won the Nordic Open two years in a row. I think Heinrich Bang, you, you, you know the player I'm familiar with? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember Falafel was doing commentary on his matches. And he said, you know, there are some plays where he chooses to go one way versus another way. And he might know that the other way is slightly better but he understands the game plan better and the variation that he chooses. And he's able to keep the positions, I guess, simpler for himself or easier for himself to make less mistakes in the future. And I always thought that that was an interesting idea. I don't know. Yeah. But as we go down through this game, I want to go to move, uh, move number six for you. And there was a missed cube here that I, I'm not sure I would have doubled either. And I mean, I know you guys what? are playing at tremendous speed. Game 34, yeah. move six. Um, yeah, yeah. So why is this uh, such a strong cube? Um. Yeah, why? It, yeah, it's, I mean, uh, I'm up 15 pips. I have an anchor. I have a better ball. I have uh, so many, you know, uh, builders um, on the four point and six point, eight point. I can double hit, you know, uh, I can double tiger, you know, double hit and double tiger is a little bit different. Um, uh, so there are many market losers actually. And if things going well for me, then I can win Gannon. So uh, I, I see, uh, I see double now. 
but I didn't see double back then, probably because I, I don't know, it's, um, speak German. Um, plus, uh, he he misplayed it uh, a five one just all before. Just the he should form. have, yeah, uh, he should have come in, came into the ace point and play five down, uh, so that he can keep the anchor. And I have no potential to make a plumbing in front of him anyway. So he shouldn't expose two blocks against my stacked uh, distributions, you know? Yeah, uh, I was thinking about that. So I... I yeah, often, but... I, go ahead. Okay, let, let, let me finish. Uh, yeah. What I was trying to say is, so when you play speed gammon, you automatically assume that your opponent's going to play that you imagine to play. You know what I mean? So in my mind, he's going to play 1-5 like that, you know, coming into the ace point and come down because I will do that, you know? Yes. So I expected him to do that. Then, of course, I instantly, this is going to be no double. Then in the actual game, he uh, plays different, which is a mistake. Then I have to double because of that, right? Mm. Uh, but uh, it's sometimes it's not easy because now my mind is set in this moment, uh, this position, and actual position is that. So you, I have to lead the uh, evaluate uh, the position, and I didn't do it because you know I was obviously uh, get lazy, and I wanted to not wanted to spend time on it. You, you, you know that that's what happened, I think. So in your own mind, you're kind of like pre-moving for the other guy. You're anticipating what his play is going to be, what the best play is. And then of kind course, of moving yeah. from there. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, of course, it saves time. So, when do you choose to enter on the 24 versus coming in high? I have my own ideas about this, just like number of checkers in the zone and how stacked they are. You know, like, yeah. uh, because in this position, yeah. there's 11 checkers here with stacks. So, I mean, the potential for the blitz is definitely there. And that's why you said coming in on the 24 and just playing 13 yeah. 8 was just much better than splitting because. It negates his blitzing game plan and sets him into just a priming one, yeah? Yeah, this is a great example of uh, my seminar about blitzing position and priming position. And uh, my my structure is a typical structure of blitzing structure. You know, I have a gap on seven and five, and I have stacked, uh, you know, checkers on the six point and eight point. So I I have uh, much less likely to um, form a nice climb in front of him. So if I'm not gonna make a climb, then he has no incentive uh, to uh, go for the advanced anchor. He is happy to be on a 24 point because you know uh, I'm not gonna climb him anyway. So but people... if he uh, yeah he chose not if if he choose to come in on a 20. Then all my all of my stack checkers, uh, you know, function as a builders. You know, we, I will attack. You know, with uh, eleven checkers in the zone. Um, so his play doesn't really make sense. Plus, he was not up in the he's down in the lane. So why you go for? You know, he can stay back and uh, wait for the shot. You know, the checkers are much happier to hit loose on the five point than they are to slot the five point. You know, um, mm -hmm. and. People are going to ask since you mentioned it. Uh, what is where is this um, priming position versus blitzing position lecture you mentioned? I remember a long time ago. I remember there was a video that was put on a backgammon TV website that had yeah yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I use the same <laughs> seminar in many places, so yeah. I have done the same uh, seminar um, in Europe and in US, I think. Uh, but uh, this year I will. I and Mark will publish the book ah, okay. um, from my seminar and his seminar. So it will be uh, it'll be a book. So you can just buy it and uh, you can check it out, I think. Perfect. Another one to add to the library. It's funny, for like so many years, there were just no backgammon books, no backgammon books, no backgammon books, right? And then all of a sudden, yeah. in the past like three years, there's just uh, a ton of new information coming out. Um, yeah, why not? Which, it's a good I, thing. I, I think it's great, for sure. Yeah. All right, so game 35, no mistakes there. Game 36. Um, I think the only thing that's in this game is the double fours that you played on move number three. After mm. four, three, two down, six, five, run, double fours. 
So any thoughts on this for people working on their openings? Not, not really. Uh, no. <laughs> I, uh, I used to remember all those sad moves uh, that I, uh, I forgot, or at least I have to think a little bit uh, to, to remember what I was remember, you know? And, yeah. uh, I, uh, obviously, I didn't have time to do that. I just uh, Yeah, went, yeah, of course, of course. It's just yeah, interesting. It yeah. Just, like, I feel like double two, like double fours, double threes, sometimes in the third rolls, like, there's always, like, interesting ways to to play these, but the first two are always making the, the 20 in general, unless you could point on somebody. Um, yeah. Right. I, I mean, I, I would like the, I'd like the best play if I don't need to play 10, six, you know what I mean? If I only play three times and I'm happy to play that way, but I really hate the 10, six part. Uh, that's why I chose my play, you know? Yeah. You know, just kind of looking at it from here, I figure after the play, regardless of whatever one you choose, you're going to be up 12 pips. And I think the computer is just looking at how you can maintain that racing advantage. And I guess after making the four and leaving three blots in the outfield, there's a lot of combinations that negate um, the racing advantage, which is the only thing I can really think of. Um, but uh, there's nothing left in this game. 37... Ah, okay. So game 37, this move was for Abe. Uh, move number three. He had a 6-4 mm -hmm. to play, and the option was either 21-11 yeah. or 13-7. to yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you for asking. This is this. I can say something about this. Please <laughs> so... do, because I've seen some of these before, and when they don't have the five point, I think it's right yeah. to make the seven sometimes. And when they do have yeah. a point, maybe it's better to make right. the 11. But right. let me hear what you think. Please. Okay, it's be, 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 very easy. If I remember correctly, okay? So three, two split. And uh, I, your opponent lost something, you know, in this case, three, one. Then you roll six, four, six, four. You have a choice between making a seven point or making an 11 point, yes? Mm -hmm. But then you always make seven point, except I lost three one. I mean, your opponent lost three one. <laughs> <laughs> if I remember correctly, okay, I, I think so. Every time you make the seven, except for this yeah. time, Abe. Except for this yes. time. <laughs> yeah. So, so a Abe was unlucky to you know get this point. Right? <laughs> Every so time. For example, it's... let's say I lost three five. You can check it out now if you want. I mean, say I lost five three instead of three one. Okay. Then making a seven is correct. <laughs> because five three is a less a threatening you know it's it's weaker yes. than five points i can see that oh yeah 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 um any other roles except three one i think uh would be uh, making uh, seven points i was opening up another xg really quickly um just to kind of check that i don't know if they can see it um but i don't want to mess up the stream so i'm going to give them the five three after this, and I'm going to press the plus button for 6-4. And it's correct to make the 7. So long story short, always make the 7 unless the guy made the 5 point. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> can you, uh, for example, can you make uh, one more uh, position? Like, sure. uh, say I go 5-1 split. So 5-1 so, split, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, 3-2 opening, of course. Okay, 3-2. Then three, two. You're then five one five one thirteen eight twenty four twenty three then, and then, then six, six four uh, okay so now you can make the two you could make the 11 or you could make the seven right yeah makes the 11 must be wrong by a lot yeah uh, it must but be. i'm not sure whether right. it's seven point or deuce I'm gonna, point i'm gonna press the plus button i want to mm -hmm. say seven point but they're almost even i'm gonna press okay. plus plus even though it's gonna slow down the stream and then what I'll have to do is roll this out later, um, just for my own sake. Yeah. So after plus plus, it says that making the two point is correct by point zero zero four. So it's basically yeah. pick them. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. So let me just check to make sure everything looks okay. Everything does. 
Um, that did not pop up for anyone else to see because it's looking at one XG window, but if you can visualize it, you will learn a million. All right, on to the next position. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, interesting. That's that's worth the price of admission right there. Um, so 6-3, come down. The rest of this game was fine, except for the 6-3 that A played. Um, what is this position here? So I'm on game 38. Ah, yes. Game 38, move number four for you. My question is, when is it right to switch the five point to the one point in these positions, right? So this mm. error wasn't a big error playing for the prime. I myself would have done exactly your play and slotted the seven. But when is it right? Like how many checkers in the zone do you need to commit to a blitz by playing five to one twice? <laughs> That's a big question. And of course, I, I don't know the answer. Uh, I mean, the more checker you have, the more likely to be right uh, to switch from five to one, I guess. It's just. I'm sorry, tough. so I don't have a definite answer. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I I can't say, uh, like sub raw, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting because I guess like twelve of your checkers are, in blitzing range. Yeah, I mean there are a number of factors comes into equation. Uh, the one is of course number of checkers. Here I have uh, twelve check uh, thirteen checkers in the zone already. Yes. If you're uh, counting so, the guy uh, on the 13, maybe, but um, uh, after the after Oh, yeah. The, the oh, best okay, play, sorry. Yeah. So, so uh, 12 checkers in the zone. After yeah. I hit and shift and start being nine, then yeah. there will be 11, uh, sorry, 12, uh, 12 checkers in the zone, mm -hmm. uh, counting a guy on the 11 point going to the five point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the, the other factor is. Uh, how many checkers on on the bar? Uh, in this case, it which is uh, three checkers on the bar. It's not even two. Mm. Uh, so even if he managed to make an anchor, he has some more time uh, to uh, counterplay me. You, you you know if you know if things uh, fail, like he enters, I hit. He uh, enters again, I hit back, and then things go mess around. But he still. Probably he's on the bar uh, again, so uh, it takes some time. Uh, plus, the the sub factor is, you know, also big factor is that he's he's in a board only one point ball is not two point ball. He has no structure at all. Um, so uh, all things combined, you know, all the factors towards to switching play uh, as a matter of fact. Um, That's a tough one for sure. It just feels very unnatural, especially at speed. To, uh, mm -hmm. to 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 find the getting rid of the five point play when when everybody yeah. everybody yeah. loves the five point so much myself included you know uh, it's yeah. tough it's a tough one it's bad bad but uh, in a speed game you tend to play um, like natural looking play you don't really want to make a bold play because it could be like a big blunder you know I mean my play it it, it ne never be a big blunder you, you yeah, know what I mean for sure. Yeah, uh, I win most game for sure, you know, in the match point. Um, so, yeah. All right. So that was game 38, 39. Um, okay. So this is just one of Abe's plays. It's funny. It's another third roll. Uh, mm -hmm. So he had a 6-5 run followed by a 4-3 split played by you. And then mm -hmm. he had a 5-2 to play, right? And so 13-8 yeah. is just clear, but then he chose to step up with the 2. Now, yeah. wh why is it better to hit with the 2, even though you have a guy out already, and, and, yeah. and you risk having a second guy sent back instead yeah. of just playing the 2 that he played, or 13-11? Yeah. Uh, this is not so clear. Can you change a position? Sure. Um, so I roll three two instead of three four uh, in the second roll. Okay. So my, you know, my checker is on the eleven point uh, instead of the nine point. And, uh, and now how he has does a five he two play? play. Five uh, two to play. Okay. Now it's right to um, step up. 
I'm gonna yeah. press I'm gonna press plus plus really quickly, so it's gonna slow something down, but it looks pretty clear. Now it's right to step up. So it's just the checker on the nine point putting a bit too much pressure on the checker on the twenty two point. Yeah, I'm I'm very glad that my brain still remembers those things. <laughs> uh, um, yes. So if your opponent start with three two instead of the three four, then it's correct to step up because uh, the uh, guy on the eleven is much less threatening to you, and much weaker builders, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't need to hit. Uh, but if you have a, your opponent have a, a guy on the nine point, you'd like to hit because now you are actually um, coming into his zone, and now he's under the gun. You know he has three numbers to point on you, like three five, three six, five six, plus nine point itself. Just making a nine point um, is really annoying for him because now he cannot get out with a six. Now he can't leave with his own sixes. So if, even if he makes the nine, he's kind of blocked. Yeah. I can actually, uh, um, so I can say more about 6-5 opening. So after 6-5 opening, yeah, mm -hmm. and your opponent do something, and you almost always hit the 5-point, hit Ruth on the 5-point, okay? Okay. Uh, do, do you follow me? Say, yes. So he rolled... Say you rolled 6-5 in the opening. And you rolled 5-4. 5-4 uh, and you roll 6 or 5-3, you always hit, hit Ruth on the 5-point. Because five point is such an um, important point, but uh, the, you never, probably not never, but you are much less likely to hit this on the four point. For example, say you roll a five four in the same position. Mm -hmm. You know you, yeah, actually this position. So instead of the five two, you roll a five four. You're not gonna hit rules. You have to run. You're gonna run exactly. Yeah. Yes. So eight, you must hit rules, but nine, you have to run. <clears throat> so uh, this is actually very good um, showcase that everything's matter. You know, you might think, oh, eight and nine seems like very similar. You know, you want to hit loose, but it's different. Um, you really want to hit on five points, but you don't want to hit four points so much. Y you know what I mean? So you... you um, so everything has to take into account. Every little checker placement, it just going from the 11 to the 9 kind of changes what blue's potential is, right? Yes, plus, you know, 5-2 or 5-4 is already different. Because 5-4, you can just run uh, to the outfield. Now it's, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, because it's not a 9 specifically, right? It's it's a 5-4 and it's not, you know, the 7s. Yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying for sure. That's uh, very interesting. Okay. No. Yeah, I, I mean, can you, okay, we, we, we don't want to go too much details on it, but can you check 5-4 uh, with the same position? 6-5, 4-3, Am I right to come out? So, um, what was the, the combo again? You said it was 6-5 run, 5-4? Five, five, no, 4-3. Oh, 4-3, okay, 4-3. Like I did in the real game. And then 5-4. Uh, yeah. And should they run? Hmm. Okay, what about I'm gonna uh, I'm pressing the six, magic five, button. Three, two. It is correct to run. Yeah. So How about six five three two, not three four? Yep, three two. Ten five four. Ooh, okay. Running looks a little less appealing here. But I it, think it's still right by a small uh, margin. So I don't have a rollout, so it might be on rollout, but on plus it's right to hit. I'm pressing plus plus right now, but it's very close. Okay. It's it's looking at the next play of running now. It looks like it's right to hit by about 0 0.012 according to plus plus. Okay, so very very small. Very very small. Interesting. But also in general, if you see. Uh, build up on a nine point in the opening stage of the game, you like to hit. You know, the build up on a nine point is so much stronger than anything else, you know? For sure. When I'm working with students, anytime we're working through the openings, I, I always make them look out for a builder on the nine point because that's when 
all of your normal looking plays kind of go out of the window and you end up hitting loose on the ace point with some fives, end up hitting loose on the deuce point with some fours. Um, those are always the fun yeah. ones. I, I can give you a good example. Um, so you're opening with 4-1, you know? Yes. 4-1 split and down, four, and you are 3-4. Yes. You have to hit loose. You you split with a three and you have to hit loose uh this point with a four, yeah? Yes. So this is a second roll. So four one split yeah. for anyone at home and then three four. Uh you it's have to technically hit correct to hit uh from six to two when you split. Yes. But uh, if if two one is opening roll, you know, two down and one split and you roll three four, then you don't need to hit loose. That's correct. Yeah, so uh, nine point uh, builders on nine and builders on eleven has a big difference. So two one, you're saying two one split. Mm hmm. It's funny. So you look at the uh, the rollout, and it's actually even money one play versus the other. Yeah. Okay, but the difference yeah. is yes, of course, much larger. You know. Yeah. The other uh, the other play, it's definitely correct to hit on the two point mm -hmm. by about mm -hmm. three mm -hmm. and a half percent. Mm -hmm. That's a point. Yeah, for sure. All right. So, I mean, by learning, uh, you know, opening play, second play, third play, you can apply the same, you know, philosophy to a much broader uh, positions, you know? Definitely. You know, if you see something that looks similar to something you've seen before, you can kind of in extrapolate or interpolate whatever the word is for, for what it is about this position. And when you're first beginning, you're often wrong. But then as you, you see more positions, you're able to refine it a bit more and become a bit more accurate. Um, Abe had a really deep take in this game 39 here after move number 12 when there was the gap on the five. You're shooting at this. He's board stinks, and he, he, he scooped this one <laughs> uh, and was able to sneak in a redouble a mere one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight moves later. <laughs> Which is how you keep the game close, folks. That's how you keep it close. <laughs> you um, you turn this around. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, uh, that, yeah, that's a. Uh, oh, that he won a game in that game for eight points. Yeah, this is a game. You know, this is game. Game he got lucky on the one eight points. Oh my goodness! So you covered. You had the slot. Oh my goodness! <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, that's how you do it, you know? How do you keep the game close? You win that one. Or it could also swing the other way very, very easily. All right, so game 40, nothing was in that one. That was pretty clear. You guys played 15 games in 15 in 50 minutes, by the way. That has to be a record. <laughs> 15 games in 50 minutes. That is a pace. So I'm on game 41 now. Um, just a little here, a little there, nothing... Nothing overly interesting. Okay, I mean, so in this game 41, you rolled double fours, okay, and that is what it is. I mean, okay, okay you can make the three point, but that's hard to see versus the other play. Um, I also have an interesting folder in my computer here when it comes to these hit or anchor sort of plays, right? With Abe's play on, I guess, the third move of the game here, he has the option to either hit you on the 16 or make the defensive 20 point, and it was incorrect to make the defensive 20 point by about 4% or so. Um, mm -hmm. What factors do you think about when making that sort of decision, whether or not to hit or anchor in a spot similar to this? Yeah. Um... Well, in the board is a factor uh, for sure. Let's say I have a uh, four point, for example, then he's much more likely to make an anchor mm -hmm. rather than hit because now he doesn't want to go for a hitting contest, you know? Because he's outboard. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, if he has a four point instead of I have four points, then he's likely to go for the hit. Then now, you know, he wants to hit. So that's one thing. The other thing is um, in this position, after he make the 20 points, he gave me a free roll, uh, hitting on the, a 10 point and uh, making a nine point, uh, sorry, a 15 point to hit, get hit and uh, nine points. 
uh, to be made. Um, so it's a little bit too much, maybe, you, you know? Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know which way I would have gone. Um, and then here, another, another take. So let me ask <laughs> you a take. question, but this one was yours, I think, yeah? No, what no, do you mean? Who, whose side was this? Oh, you doubled and, and Abe took this one. Yes, of course. I remember yeah. this. I, I just did commentary on this for like a, a little while ago. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, this is a tough take, but these are very common uh, takes from this our our new favorite player here. So, so what makes this so bad besides uh, being down sixty five pips, uh, having a blot on the two point, being outboarded, having blots in your home board? What makes this so bad? <laughs> <laughs> well. Do you agree that this is a pass, right? Hundred percent. I mean, would you pass? Yeah. I, okay. I, I I wouldn't take this even if I was playing with somebody else's money, you know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, what can I say? In all aspects of the game, he is down. He's down sixty-four pips. You know, he's outmoded. Um, he has a blot on the four point. Uh, and he can lose gammon. You know. I have a guy on a 20, but it's very easy to, to uh, he's not containing me in, in any way. Uh, so it's uh, only Abe can uh, put it off. Yeah. So <laughs> in, in, in a spot like this to defend uh, my, my friend here, you know, um, yeah, I feel like if he had access to a pip count, he, he not guaranteed, obviously, but he might have passed if he had known the number was 65 instead of something like 30 uh, or 40. I mean, you can visually see that it's bad, but like he, when, when he, you see 64. Yeah. No, 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 let, let yeah. me tell you. I, I mean, he, of course he knew that he was down in the pit. Of, course, count, of, of course, course, of course. Right, but if somebody visually show him that you are down 64, that trigger him, you know, like, oh, what I'm doing here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because it's, it's if you don't see the real numbers, then you might think like, oh, I'm down a little bit. You know, I know maybe 10 pips, 20 pips. He has like not a clear vision. Uh, so it doesn't trigger him, you know, to rethink. Uh, but it's yeah. impressive if he takes the cube after showing him to yes, 64 Yes, of pips. course, of course, of course. Which, <laughs> well, I, which I, don't I, I don't think he would have done had he known it was that many. There are certainly been yeah. times I've been playing over the board where I didn't know the race was that bad when I took because I didn't stop to count. But in my instances, I have no excuse not to count. I wasn't playing on a clock, you know, yeah. um, and then I look at it later because it's more of a casual game. And I go, oh, my goodness, I can't believe I took this because in the light of seeing clearly after the game is over, you can recognize how bad it is. But for some mm -hmm. reason in the moment, sometimes, you know, you just your hand is on the trigger, you know. But right. um, yeah, I by, had... by, by the way, I, I started uh, some discussion on Facebook about a uh, pit count. You know, I really hope that somebody invented the uh, uh, equipment that shows the pit count automatically on live board. Yeah, there's a guy who but... anytime that discussion is brought up, he brings up yeah. his Bisma board. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 you know yeah, who no, I'm no, talking no. about, right? Yeah. I I, yeah, I, I know him, and the Bisma board is fine, but it's not what I want. You it's know? not elegant it, enough for you. You yeah, want, you want yeah. a, a normal board. It, it, yeah, that that should show the pip count anytime uh, without any waiting time. You know, just show it like like uh, internet back end, you know, yeah. but in the right board. I feel like if they're almost like a poker table, where there's mm -hmm. RFID chips in the cards and you put the cards on a certain spot and they can tell you what the cards are, right? I feel yeah. like if you have RFID sensors built into the checkers, right? Yeah. And you have readers under the board on every point, like you might not be getting real-time information to be able to put into XG, but it should be able to tell you a count just based on blue and white or in my scenario or black and white, right? It should be able mm -hmm. to tell you just based on where they are, what mm -hmm. the count is, pretty simply. Um, if the board is connected to a, a, yeah, it should be able to do that pretty easily if somebody can implement something like that. But then you have to put the RFID chips in uh, in the checkers and then build the readers into the board. 
and be able to keep track of the count that way. But it seems possible just for that, but I don't know. No, I'm not. It's worth the I'm very amazed that so many people actually against it. Uh, like they they feel like a pip count should be done by human brain, and uh, you know it's like a part of the skill and stuff like that. But uh, I think the uh, okay, I agree that this is a part of the backend skill, but it's I mean an interesting skill. You, you know what I mean. Um, it's a waste of time, waste of energy. I don't like it. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't care. You know, people doesn't count pip. Uh, you know, I, I can just give them a service. Yeah. <laughs> so, I feel like there's there's something to be said about the equity gained for someone who might be too lazy to count. Yeah. But, but it's one thing if the person isn't lazy, they're going to count, but they're just slow. Yeah. And they're gonna get there anyway, but it's just gonna take them a long time. So against players that are just too lazy and aren't going to count, I feel like there's a lot of equity to be gained by them not really knowing the race. But versus players that are going to count but are just slow, it does just slow the game down tremendously. Yeah, but it's not only about the equity, you know, if I have an edge or he has an edge, but it's also like a better gaming experience as well. You, you, you know what I mean? I agree. It would be more fun for me if I never had to count another pip in my life. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people uh, believe, a lot of beginners and the inter intermediate believe that they are weak because they couldn't do a pip count. You, you know what I mean? Actually, it's not true. It, 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 you don't need to be like super strong player by, you know, you know, you, you cannot be a, a good player by just doing pip count, but they feel like they are not strong enough. They are not strong because of the pip count. But, but why don't we just give them a better, you know, uh, gaming experience and so they will play more. And if they play more, they will, you know, strong players will benefit more, uh, obviously, in many ways. More games per hour is... Uh... More games per hour, more players uh, in the tournament uh, and everything, more sell back in the board or whatever. <laughs> okay. But I'm... it's okay. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing it. Um, and one final thing. So in game 41, move number 10 for you, yeah. there was a 6-5 that was played, mm -hmm. which I think is your only proper blunder of the entire match when you have this entire uh, episode when you chose to make the ace point instead of run out and around. Mm. So what's happening here just from your perspective? I mean, I have my ideas, but... I, I don't know. Mm. What, what are you mm. thinking? Well, ob obviously, I was comparing uh, coming out and giving a double shot and making a ace point. And obviously, I was wrong. But I was thinking that uh, by staying back and uh, um, strengthen my board, it uh, creates more difficult decision for him and easier decision for me. Because after making an ace point, my play is very clear and his his play will be uh, more difficult, maybe, you know. So um, that's why I did it. Uh, for example, let's say he rolls 6-2 after my play, you know. Okay. Would you hit lose or would you come out like 2018, 13-7 um, or, you know, uh, many plays that follows can be very difficult for him. I agree. And now I'm thinking about it, what I would do with my two, what I hit or what I come out. And, yeah. Uh, I would likely come out, but I'm not sure. Hmm. And you'd likely hit. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, but I think what didn't I didn't see was that if I come out and he miss, I win gallon actually. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I, I am up so much in the lace. I over the board, I, I thought that I have to hit, I have to hit to, to win Gammon, but it wasn't the case. You, you know, I just run and he missed, I win Gammon. So uh, uh, look at the numbers of the winning Gammon. Uh, my play wins 40% Gammon, and uh, the best play wins 39%. It was almost uh, no difference. Almost, you know? almost equal. But the difference mm -hmm. in wins is substantial. It's like 6%. 
Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that I know. I mean, that、uh, everybody knows that in DMP you have to run, of course. You don't、yeah, want to get plays, stuck. Yeah, running plays always win more games, and making points、mm-hmm. generally win more gamins, except in this instance, because if you run around and then you get missed, then you just have yourself a running gamin. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if he gets to bat you around a bit, you could lose some of your gamins from him just making up ground in the race as he's hitting you. Yeah, and win. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so there's a 3 1 there. Let's see if there's anything else. So here, I mean, look at that. Very next play, he had a yeah, 3 1. Yeah. And、mm-hmm. the, the best play was to hit. Mm hmm. I, I and, mean, I, and he I couldn't get himself him. to do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just the difficulty. I, 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 don't, I don't know if I could find the best play.、Uh, on the speed game, I'm no way. You know, I just play some random games, random play, you know. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be confident for sure, which makes me second guess my 6 2 entirely right now. <laughs> 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 But there's, there's nothing else to be done, I guess, here.、Um, wow. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Okay, so. Nothing really else in this game. Game 42. Ah, okay. So, game 42, move number eight. I actually rolled this out for Abe.、Um, so, if I got rid of my rollout, it, it's, it's going to say. A, so, what, what does it say on your screen for Abe's decision? How wrong was his 6 5? 6 5, you should come down by 76. Okay, so, and how much equity does coming down with two have? What is it worth? Point what? Point eight?、Um, you know, two down is point eight eight, and、uh, coming out and down is point nine five. So I, I yeah, rolled this yeah. out. Yeah. And now the plays are almost equal. Playing,、oh, really? two, okay. playing two down turned into a point nine eight six position. <laughs> Which makes it a, a small take, right?、Um, and、yeah. I, 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 I guess maybe his coming out with two could be significantly worse if he's going to take because it turns、mm. it into a pass, but it's so close、mm. to、um, the other decision now that it makes his play not a blunder because he did correctly pass after making that play. I just thought it was interesting that. Um, plus plus had this as like the best play by a large margin, but after the rollout, it changed it by like 10%. Would you have、yeah. been able to take this after playing two down? Would you have found the best play and then would you have been able to take this? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's interesting seeing the different number at plus plus, which is the、um, standard for the UBC versus. What it says on rollout, too.、Uh, I, I mean, this is very strong double. So I, I probably dropped the cube anyway. Yeah. And I, I just wanted to point out that this is the only one that he dropped the cube, which was take, maybe. Oh, actually, it's a pass <laughs> after the rollout. A- after, after his play, it's a pass regardless. Yes. Okay.、Um, but、uh, after two plus plus down, said it's a take. Yes. Oh, so I, sorry. I also rolled out the,、um, the, the、yeah. pass decision after his play. And actually,、yeah. it's, e- it's almost even money. Take pass. It's actually a pass、mm-hmm. by only 0.004. So for, for, he, for him, it's like 200 take, you know? <laughs> for him, this is the easiest take ever, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny what you know, players have as ideas in their mind when he has an anchor. Versus being in an open position like this, what his perception of Gammon's won versus Gammon's lost are when he has an anchor versus when he doesn't have an anchor, right? Like、mm-hmm. in like some of the other positions where he had the 20 point anchor and the guy on the two, he might have lost more Gammon's than in this position. Yeah. In reality, but in, in, your, in his own mind, he felt like he won. Or he lost fewer Gammon's in the other one than in this one. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, 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 so mm-hmm. it's, it's interesting、yeah. like how, how your, your perception of a position just isn't necessarily the reality of it, where to him, this seemed like a much more dangerous position than the other one where he had the 20 point anchor and a guy on the two point, right? 
I find I find that stuff very interesting. Cool. Yeah, that's a, a tough one. I think that was the last of the interesting positions. So everything else was a quick game, easy pass. Game number 44. Um, seemed pretty flawless on both sides. And, oh, no, I was wrong. Game 45. So Abe had a few blunders in the beginning of this game. I'm surprised he actually played this um, fourth roll this way, splitting to the 18 in this position instead of just making the minor split and playing 13-7, which is just so much safer and makes it much harder for you to come home. Um any ideas on this spot? I mean, the, the play seems pretty clear, but I don't know if it's just something that if you're not familiar seeing, you just don't make it if you don't see it that often. Yeah. I, I mean, players who trained with extreme gammon enough would know uh, yes, that uh, minus split is right here. We have seen uh, so many similar positions already. Uh, but clearly, he has not uh, much training with them, uh, with uh, Extreme Gammon. So that's why he, he did this. Yeah. I don't um, know if you saw the interview I did with Abe and put on my channel, but... It was amazing. It was a great interview. I really loved it. You oh, know. thank you. But I, I thought it was funny because we made jokes about me refusing to put Extreme Gammon on his computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... I yeah, I, I'm giving $1,000 not to do it. Yes, of course. I go, there's no way. There's no way I would ever do something so stupid. I've done dumb things yeah. in my life before. You yeah, know? I mean, I, who, whoever hired by him to instruct Simgown, I would pay more. <laughs> I've, so I've, contact me, please. You know, I'll I give you 100000 more. Mochi, my, my, my very first time skydiving, I joined the Accelerated Freefall Program, trained to skydive and then jumped solo by myself, okay? My very first skydive ever, right? And that yeah. was less stupid than giving Abe Extreme Gammon, <laughs> okay? I rode down the most dangerous bike road in the world, in Bolivia, on the world's okay. most dangerous road on a bicycle. Yes, I did. Unfortunately, okay. a girl was seriously injured the day before. I did it anyway. That was less stupid than giving <laughs> Abe Extreme Gammon on his computer, okay? <laughs> okay? Yeah. Yeah, I, I wanna I wanna him to be like yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, it, so I mean it. Yeah, it's more fun basically. You for know? sure. For I sure. don't wanna I don't wanna see a no. dropping more cubes. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's more fun this way for sure. For yeah, sure. You yeah. know, it's funny. After challenging you, he said in the interview that he's willing to accept challenges from pretty much anybody that's in New York that has a decent yeah. name and backgammon that wants yeah. to play this format, and so. Yeah. You know, I've heard, I've had people reach out to me seeing if they want to get Zenig Ziska in the game. Some other people have yeah. reached out to me as well. And I'd love to see uh, all of those challenges. Um, yeah. But, you yeah, know, that was, uh, it was good fun. It was just as fun as I expected, for sure. Bring, uh, uh, bring uh, Ziska, bring uh, Lion, you know, and uh, make them fight. It's going to be interesting. It would be fun for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, anytime they're in New York City and they want to have a 50-game set, we'll get someone who knows how to count to 50 to keep track of the games instead of 45. And uh, we can have some fun. We can have some fun. I'd definitely love to record uh, another session of that and, and put it up. Um, well, Mochi, that's uh, that's all of the games. Is there anything you wanted to add? Anything that you, you feel like we've missed in this 20 hours of talking about this challenge? <laughs> No, not really, but I, I still remember after I fin we finished 45 games, uh, you know, uh, we, I and A both felt like we played like six hours, but in the reality, we only played like three hours. We are so exhausted, you know? It was funny. Abe goes, man, this is exhausting. It's so tiring, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And you agreed, yeah. and then you looked at Abe and you go, but I can play more. <laughs> No, no, because, you know, I was so much adrenaline going on in my uh, of course, body. Of course. I want to relax a little bit. So we played a short to relax a little bit, you know. It's true. <laughs> and I have, uh, I have the video 
of you, Nebzet, and Abe playing um, that Shuet, which I'm going to add an XG feed to. Oh, and, no. I don't want to see that. I, and then also I remember that, that I, was, I was destroyed in that Shuet, you know, and I don't think I played well in that Shuet, so I don't want to see it. But, I, uh, I, yeah. I think you played great in the Shuet as well. Um, nah, okay. Maybe uh, I was unlucky. Yes, I, I, I think so. I don't want to spoil too much, but let's just say that um, the snake's revenge uh, <laughs> uh, came, and it, it should be fun to see. Um, and a lot of people, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure if they're familiar with chouette play and how that works, but that is much more common than heads-up money play, for sure. People playing in chouettes with games with multiple people playing over a single board and everyone has access to their own cube. So I think, you know, introducing people to chouette play is another way to get people playing more backgammon, which I think is always good. And how often do you get to like two world champions and uh, an Abe snake in a game, you know? That's true. All right. Well, Mochi, thank you for this. Uh, we'll toss this up on the channel, I guess, right after I combine all these video clips together. And thank you for playing in that challenge. Thank you for allowing me to record it, toss commentary on it, and thank you for doing post-match analysis. I've been getting messages from tons of people um, who have watched this and, and really have liked seeing you battle it out at speed. And uh, very, very impressive, again, your PR, even in this uh, format, which is, is pretty impressive. So thanks a lot. Uh, all right. S thanks a lot. It was fun. And uh, let's do it again uh, when I come back to New York. Sounds good to me. Uh, all right. Have a good one. Bye.